it during the processional, the ceremony, and the recessional. Thank you.
Good morning. I am Tim DeNoble, Dean of the College of Architecture, Planning, and Design here at Kansas State University. I am pleased to welcome you to the 2019 commencement ceremony. Would all of you please join uh, us by standing uh, and singing of the national anthem. Please be seated. Before we proceed with our program, I would like to introduce Richard Myers, president of Kansas State University, who will join me in congratulating our graduates as they cross the stage. Great to have you here, President Myers. It's indeed an honor to have President Myers join us today, and it's certainly a pleasure to work with him in crafting the future of our university and our college within it. I would also like to introduce the members of the faculty and staff who are present today and on our stage. Please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. Faculty, please stand when your name is announced and remain standing until everyone has been introduced. Beginning at your right, La Barbara James Wigfall, Associate Professor. Peter Magyar, FRIBA Professor, um, who will be retiring, as noted in the supplement, after 12 years of service at Kansas State University in AP Design. Vladimir Kristic, Associate AIA and Associate Professor. Hyung Jin Kim, PhD, Associate Professor. Blake Bellinger, ASLA, Associate Professor. Michael Gibson, AIA, Associate Professor. Greg Newmark, PhD, Associate Professor. Genevieve Boudin, unable to uh, make it today. Professor. And I would, would like to note that she's an assistant professor and a trainer HL Architects Faculty Award recipient. Judy Gordon, lead AP, associate professor. Bob Condia, 2009 FAIA fellow, professor, and Victor L. Rainier, Rainier Architecture Chair. Ann Beamish, associate professor and PhD, program coordinator. Katrina Lewis, Associate Professor, Environmental Design Studies Coordinator. Wendy Ornelas, FAIA Professor. Michael Grogan, AIA Associate Professor. Matthew Knox, AIA Professor and Department Head of Architecture. 
Viba Johnny, Associate Professor representing the Department of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Stephanie Raleigh, FASLA, Professor and Department Head of Landscape Architecture and Regional Community Planning. And President Richard Myers, I've already introduced, but we also have with us Brad Seidner with the K-State Alumni Association, Coach Bill Snyder, and Emmy Chamberlain. You'll hear more about those two in a little bit. <laughs> there are other members of the College of Architecture, Planning, Design who I'd also like to thank. Tom Jackson, Communications and Events Coordinator. Lisa Last, Director of Academic Services and Academic Advisor. Becky O'Donnell, Student Services Project Coordinator, and uh, many others that have participated in this that make our combined efforts uh, of our ceremony and reception possible. Also like to thank the staff of McCain Auditorium for the superb job they do each year setting up our rehearsal and ceremony and doing their best to make me sound good. Um, please accept our sincere appreciation for your hard work. So this is a wonderful and joyous day. A day all of us, graduates, faculty, staff, administration, parents, guardians, friends, and siblings have worked for and can celebrate together. Like all the major rituals in our lives, this occasion is a threshold to another life. Together we can conduct and enjoy today's ritual giving it the gravity and dignity it deserves. While your children, friends, Relatives, siblings have passed from students to graduates in yesterday's ceremony of graduate commencement. Today we celebrate their achievements. They sit before you armed with drive, expertise, craft, and acumen developed and tested during their education. During their time here, these students have been exposed to the rigors of practice through internship, and have felt the pains and joys of being thrust into foreign and strange cultures while studying abroad. They have been subjected to constant scrutiny by some of the world's most accomplished educators and critics, and have upheld the very high standard of performance set over the years by over 6,500 alumni who have crossed this threshold from our college, this crucible that is AP design. Like our past graduates, this year's cohort is prepared, tested, and more than ready for the challenges of professional practice in this age. We are very proud of the educational model in the College of Architecture, Planning, and Design, and are motivated by our belief that design thinking is an integral component of education and vital to the betterment of the world, a necessary part of a civilized society. Through their highly developed planning and design skills and leadership capacities, our graduates are prepared to inventively apply their knowledge in confronting the overarching concerns of our society, including stewardship of the environment, social equity and justice, economic viability and opportunity, and finally, what drove many of us to get into this, aesthetic delight. So please enjoy today's ceremony knowing that your involvement in your graduate's life is in every way as significant and worth celebrating as that of our faculty, staff, and administration. You furled the foundation in preparation for the structure we added. Together we've done great things and can be assured that society will benefit from our efforts. So, at this time, I'm going to introduce our commencement speaker. Coach Bill Snyder, who is here today with his lovely wife Sharon in the front row. Pleased to have you here. So to understand the full picture of Coach Snyder, it's necessary to acknowledge his values, sincerity, and warmth, along with the concern he shows for the people around him. All qualities that solidify his reputation as an innovator and mentor in college athletics. So each year when pondering an invitation for a commencement speaker, we consider who is impactful, who's inventive, and who's a great example. Most times we select a speaker from one of our, uh, or served by our disciplines. This year we invited the man often referred to as the architect of the greatest turnaround in college football history. 
okay? <laughs> to which I would add, he changed the landscape of intercollegiate athletics <laughs> through his meticulous planning and large part based on his amazing ability to develop interior linemen. So I <laughs> just wanted to be sure I got all that. <laughs> Coach Snyder's unprecedented success in 25 years at Kansas State has not gone unnoticed. He's been named the National Coach of the Year on five occasions, beginning in 91 and last in 2012. He's been a finalist for the prestigious Bear Bryant National Coach of the Year Award, 93, 95, 2011, and 2012, and so many more accomplishments that, frankly, we'd be here all day if we tried to do it. In 2015, he was awarded the Excellence in Mentoring Award by Mentor, the National Mentoring Partnership, in recognition of his longstanding commitment to meeting the mentoring needs of young people in Kansas. Coach Snyder received his Bachelor of Arts from William Jewell in 1963 and his Master of Arts from Eastern New Mexico in 1965. As a player, he was a three-year winner, uh, letter winner as a defensive back at William Jewell. Bill and Sharon have two sons, three daughters. They also have eight grandchildren and, since this was written, three great-grandchildren. Is this correct? Do I have it right? More? A lot, there are a lot of people out there, a lot of stuff. <laughs> Therefore, I suspect the Snyders will be as busy off the field as they have been on the field. So, Coach, uh, I invite you to uh, give your message to our graduates. Please join. Thank you very, very much, and uh, <clears throat> I greatly appreciate Dean DeNoble for inviting me to speak. I've done uh, four or five of these over the, the years, and uh, it never gets old. I enjoy seeing young people who, you know, have come through a process with uh, a great deal of uh, uh, fortitude and uh, persistence and a desire to be successful, and I have a great appreciation for them. Uh, my congratulations to each and every one of the graduating class. My congratulations to uh, the faculty who made uh, or helped make it all happen, and certainly my congratulations to all the parents and the family members you know, who once again had such a, a dramatic contribution to the successes of all these young people up here. And I encourage each and every one of the young people, the young graduates today to make sure that you pass on your thank yous to each and every one of those uh, faculty members and, and parents and family members who have contributed so much to your successes. You know, I think uh, addressing uh, young people, one thing that uh, always comes to, comes to mind is the fact that uh, each of us have so very, very much in common. You know, there are a lot of things that, that uh, make us different from each other. Nobody is uh, exactly like someone else. True in the audience, true certainly back here for these young people. Uh, but I think, you know, one, uh, I say one, a couple of things that, uh, that I think of that uh, addresses a ceremony like this that they all have in common, among many other things, but certainly a tremendous desire to be successful. Uh, they've certainly proven that. And uh, also the fact that they will be thrust into leadership roles uh, in their lifetime in a variety of different ways, be it with their communities, their families, with their career fields, uh, many other ventures in their lives, but leadership will certainly be you know, a part of their, their lives. And I think when you think about that desire to be successful as well as being thrust into a leadership role, you know, you think about what are the principles to be able to have, quote, that success in each of those areas that are important to you. And uh, I, I think it's, uh, you know, we're, we're hard pressed uh, to sometimes find the direction, but the principles, as I say, are uh, pretty much one and the same. And I think first and foremost, 
you know, as I share with the young people across the country, you know, how significant and important it is in our lives to surround ourselves with people who genuinely care, people who want to make our life better, people who will make our life better, and uh, by the same token, being able to reciprocate. And by that, I mean to be that individual, a individual who certainly will do each and every one of those things, who will care about people, who will try to help make life better for, for others. And that's, I think, the role of all of us, certainly the parents and the family, the faculty members here have put themselves in a position to do exactly that. And, and I know many of the student graduates have done so and hopefully encourage them to continue to do exactly that. I think, you know, we look at uh, uh, the university itself, Kansas State University, and I shared with the group last night, uh, one of the things that, that brought me, I say one of the things, that which brought me to Kansas State University uh, were the people of the community of Manhattan and the University of Kansas State. And that is what has kept uh, Sharon and I and our family here in Manhattan, Kansas, you know, because of the people. And I encourage each and every one of these young people to understand the value of those relationships that they define in their lives. And, and certainly that you stand firm and in a position to be able to help guide and direct other people to become successful as well, which I'm confident that you will. You know, I think one of the things that uh, we look at when, uh, when we address opportunities to become successful and exactly, you know, how does that, how does that take place? You know, we all, as I said, have that desire to do so. Uh, but oftentimes, and particularly in this day and age, you know, in the young people that uh, are here today are in a, in, a, in a group in our society that is often referred to as uh, a generation of instant self-gratification. You know, I, I want it, I want it now. If I can't have it now, then I'm going to move on to something else, uh, probably a sad way to live a life. And my encouragement quite obviously is, you know, hopefully that that doesn't uh, invade in your personality uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I think, you know, we're, we all have uh, in common the fact that we establish goals for ourselves. But an interesting thing about goals, you know, because we, we all establish them uh, to a certain degree and then once again, you know, if instant self-gratification takes over, you know, if we have some difficulty uh, achieving those goals or moving towards uh, the achievement of those goals, then we back off or give up on it and move on to something else. And uh, being able to define goals is, is truly important. The National Education Association did a study many years ago and they indicated that a uh, hundred percent of our society have goals for ourselves, meaning that everybody in this auditorium today has goals established for themselves. But the, the study also indicated that less than 50 percent of all of us who have goals uh, have a, a well thought out plan about how to achieve those goals. And then another disturbing uh, statistic is that uh, only 5% actually achieve the goals that they set for themselves. One of the things that, you know, to me becomes so significant is the process. You know, we, we all have uh, in the uh, in, in Dean the Nobles uh, College, you know, there is a process. There's a process about how each one of these students, you know, continues and completes their education, their degree field, and prepare themselves for the future. Well, a process in being able to establish and achieve the goals that we success, uh, set for ourselves is, to me, you know, as, as virtually as important as anything that we do in our lives. And I think number one, you know, in establishing those goals is defining what your priorities are. You know, what's going to be important in your lives? You know, today, tomorrow, next year, years after that, many, many years down the road. What are the real priorities in your life? And from that, you define your goals. You know, I've always taken young people that uh, come into our program and uh, given them a, a challenge to give them a notebook, a, a, a pad, 
uh, pencil and send them home uh, and have it put it on their, their bed stand and then every night for a solid week is to find those priorities in their lives and go back to that uh, pad each and every night and define, you know, is that really something that is highly significant and important in my life and something that I want to achieve? And over a period of a week's period of time, you uh, come to closure on those things that are important, therefore the goals that you have set for yourself. I think the second step in regards to, as uh, the NEA indicated, uh, less than 50% have a plan. You know, what is the plan? What do I have to do in order to achieve these goals? What are the steps that I need to take? Step A, B, C, D, E, and whatever the number happens to be. And therein lies the value of those people that you bring into your life, those people that genuinely care about you and want to make your life better. You know, there are people there that can identify for you the steps that you need to take to achieve things that you have not achieved before in your life and therefore might not know the direction that you would have to take. Uh, professors here that have worked with you in the classroom, certainly in regards to your career field, they have, uh, have certainly been able to do that. But you have the opportunity to select those people that you can bring into your life that will help guide you in defining how you can reach the goals that you set for yourself. And I think the, you know, the last thing is, uh, you know, is having the perseverance, the persistence to do it. You know, like the Nike thing, you know, we're a Nike school and Nike slogan, just do it, means an awful lot. You know, it's like getting up in the mornings, which so many of you, you know, are not always infatuated with uh, early classes. And, uh, you know, it's a matter of putting one foot on the floor and then the other foot on the floor. You just did it and got up and made it all happen. And sometimes uh, we don't always have the uh, innateness to be able to do that or the fortitude to do it and I encourage that to be a part of uh, exactly exactly what you do. You know I think you know when you when you look at, at trying to achieve the successes, the desires, the, the goals that you have in your life you know it, it certainly takes that, that consistent improvement which we talk about all the time you know, and I've always shared that's been a, a byline of our program to find that way every single day of your life to make a step forward, to make a little bit of improvement in each of those areas that are significant in your life. You know, be it with your family, be it with your faith, uh, being with your future, with your career field, to be the best student, whatever the case may be, just a little step forward each and every day. And eventually we get where we desire to go. You know, but when we put those things off, procrastinate and put it off to another day, then it becomes easier to do the same thing the next day. But if we make that commitment to each and every day, trying to find that way in which we can come, become a little bit better in each and every one of those areas of our lives that are important to us, success will, will find you quite certainly. You know, I think, you know, I've uh, mentioned you know, the perseverance that it takes, perseverance, persistence, not giving up, whatever the case may be. And, and certainly, you know, that is something that in, in your generation is going to be, in my eyes, highly significant in the uh, success and the future of our nation is to be able to have that persistence to continue to fight the battles, take the steps, step by step, to achieve that which you desire to achieve. You know, and there's, there's so many uh, in, in, in your families as well as in our history books and what we know about other people and what we've learned in our vast, uh, vast world. There are so many stories about, uh, about great persistence and people who have achieved great successes because of not giving in to circumstances that would probably cause most people to give up. You know, I, I think in your history books about uh, Abraham Lincoln, you know, you've all read in your history books, I've, I assume, uh, Dean, that we, they do have to take a history class, I would hope, but maybe, okay. Uh, but if not, you certainly did in high school, but you think about Abraham Lincoln, and here was, uh, you know, one of the most significant presidents in our history, 
who attempted public office seven consecutive times and failed in every single attempt at public office. He went bankrupt. He lost his fiance in a sudden tragic death. All of these negative things happened to him, but never gave up, never gave up persistence, fought the battle, and on his eighth attempt to become uh, uh, to gain public office, he became the President of the United States. You know, a pretty special thing. And I often tell, you know, the story, uh, a number of stories, and time won't uh, permit right now, but I, I think about Steven Spielberg. All of you, you know, have heard about uh, Steven Spielberg, uh, uh, probably the uh, premier uh, movie director in, in the history of our nation who uh, happened to be, when I first came to Kansas State, happened to be in a conversation with him out in California, and he was telling me the story <clears throat> of always wanting to be in the film production business uh, for his entire life. And he graduated from uh, Long Beach High School, wanted to go to the University of Southern California, where they had uh, undeniably the finest uh, production uh, major field of study uh, anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world. And he was denied admissions because he didn't have uh, good enough grades in order to uh, gain admissions at USC and uh, was heartbroken, uh, but didn't give up. You know, went to school in uh, a community college in Long Beach and eventually got, uh, got anxious and, and went to Hollywood, moved to Hollywood, picked up everything he had, uh, found a, uh, an apartment that uh, he, he couldn't afford, didn't have money for, uh, went to studio after studio and offered to volunteer to help because he couldn't find a job at any of them. They allowed him to volunteer at one of the studios, he eventually hired him, and uh, history you know, speaks for itself, you know, how popular uh, he became and how successful he became. But there are so many stories like that and, and the persistence that it takes in order to achieve those kind of successes, you know, is, uh, is certainly very important for us. I think, you know, yeah, pardon me, young people today, uh, and not just young people, all people today, you know, sometimes we, there are those expectations, let me put it this way, there are those expectations that are placed upon us, and you've grown up with those expectations, you know, that, you know, mother and father have said, you know, go to school, you know, be a good person, uh, a lot of the uh, oh, issues, alcohol, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that take place in our society, stay away from it. In other words, people have had great expectations of your performance, and, and, it, and they truly have been important. But to me, what is most important are your self-expectations. You know, what do you expect of yourself? That becomes highly significant in your life. And uh, probably the, uh, the thing that, uh, that partners with that is limitations, self-limitations, you know, and I find that in your generation uh, today that uh, many young people have lower self-expectations. They have placed limitations on their capabilities to achieve the successes that they're capable of. One thing you've heard of from your parents, you know, all your lives is that you can do anything you desire to do if indeed, you know, you work hard. Working hard is part of it, but once again, having a plan, uh, to be able to, uh, to work hard at becomes highly successful. Nevertheless, uh, I think uh, this is a class, uh, having a chance to meet uh, a number of you, uh, listen to you hearing uh, Dean DeNoble over a period of time, you know, talk about uh, this class in particular, but uh, the school and, and what uh, your professors uh, the, uh, the capacity that they have not only to be able to teach you but to be a part of what you do and you be a part of what they do has really become special. So I wish you, you know, the very best of good fortune, good luck. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Coach, uh, I want to thank you for your words, and uh, I, want, uh, I have another trophy for you to add to your case. It's uh, small, but I hope it's uh, significant to you. So. Thank, you thank you very much.
So again, a great words and a great example, Coach. And uh, I should add that uh, Coach Snyder served quite selflessly in advocating uh, on behalf of our new facility at many a catbacker event across Kansas. So you may have heard him uh, waxing eloquently about uh, AP design uh, out in Dodge or down in Wichita. And, uh, it, you know, truly uh, the power of the pontiff on the purple pulpit for us. So we really appreciate that. So. So each year the university and college recognize individuals who have generously contributed their time and expertise to the benefits of our students, faculty, profession, and society. And this year I am pleased to uh, honor Emmy Chamberlain as recipient of the Distinguished Service Award from Architecture, Planning, and Design. So Emmy, would you please come forward? So Emmy Chamberlain is the project manager for campus planning and project management uh, with the Kansas State University Division of Facilities. She grew up in the suburbs of Kansas City and had an interest in architecture before she even knew the word. Although she initially wanted to attend an architecture school out of state, not sure where that was coming from, she chose uh, to go to uh, K-State because, quote, it has one of the best architecture programs in the nation, unquote. She also married one of her classmates, Chris, also an architecture graduate. That never happens, does it? I mean, you know, really. And both went on to earn their degrees in 2009, so 10 years ago. As part of her job with K-State, Emmy was char has, has watched the Manhattan campus change in big ways. She's been a member of the project teams for the Chester E. Peters Recreation Center expansion, renovation of West Memorial Stadium, for the College of Architecture, Planning, and Design renovation of Seton and Rainier Hall. And uh, perhaps one of her most significant projects is that she and Chris have a wonderful soon-to-be four-year-old Parker. We've had the pleasure of, to watch Emmy grow from a wonderful designer to a superb and effective project manager and client advocate. No doubt that our wonderful building owes in large part to Emmy's effort and dedication throughout the design and construction of the project. Ladies and gentlemen, our Distinguished Service Award winner, Emmy Chamberlain. Thank you, Emmy. Well, now, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize the many contributions of all the parents, families, and friends of our graduates. Would all of you on, uh, please stand so that those of us on stage may show our appreciation for you with a round of applause. This allows you to stretch your legs a little bit too. How's that? I'm proud to announce the honor, awards and honors for exceptional performance that some of our students have received from professional societies, honor societies, the state, the university, the college, and the departments. Not every award that's uh, been bestowed will be recognized today, but um, we do want to uh, really call special attention to these awards. And some of the recipients will first learn of this recognition today. Each award or honor is briefly described in the commencement supplement, and each recipient will be asked to stand and then be seated. After all the awards have been announced, I'll ask the uh, recipients to stand as a group so we can recognize them with a round of applause. For the College of Architecture, Planning, and Design, we like a special recognition goes out to our Oz Journal editors, Olivia Ashbrook and Tara Bray. Would you two please stand? Thank you. The ARCC King Student Medal for Excellence in Architecture in Research goes to Casey Holly. Casey? Yeah. In the Department of Architecture, the Alpha Rho Chi Medal recipient is Nicholas Horvath. Nicholas. 
the American Institute of Architects Henry Adams Medal and Certificate recipient, Samuel Green. The John F. Helm Award, Mahima Shuresh. Mahima, not present, but we got that one. The Kramer Prize winning team for Michael Gibson's Net Positive Studio. Stephen Burgandy. <laughs> Yuming Cao. Christian Carter. Matthew Dickman. Uh, Danielle DeLeja. Jonathan Disberger. Cody Gable. Joseph Cutter, Michelle Lee, Catherine Meadows, Matthews, excuse me, Amber Morris, Kazim Namazi, William Olds, Safa Sali, and Jessica Wyatt. Congratulations to the Kramer Prize winning team. the Heinzelman Prize. We want to uh, recognize the, the um, uh, nominees as well. Nicholas Horvath, Chandler Wilson, and Shay Enzer. The recipient of the 2019 Heinzelman Prize from Professor Wendy Ornelas' studio project titled Stratum, Chandler Wilson. And the Department of Interior Architecture and Product Design, the Jack C. Durgan Interior Architecture and Product Design Award goes to McKenna Rhodes. McKenna Rhodes. <laughs> the Allen Hastings Outstanding Product Design Award winner is Kevin Hartman. <laughs> I want his chair. The Outstanding Furniture Design Award, Jake Mullins. <laughs> Outstanding Interior Architecture Design Award goes to Nora Algowari. <laughs> My apologies. I, I normally don't pronounce words with that many syllables. I apologize. So. The uh, James Dubois Outstanding Graduate Senior Award recipient is Allison Trent. Allison. <laughs> the Interior Architecture and Product Design Student Leadership Award, Margaret Maggie Schulte. <laughs> and the Eugene T. McGraw Scholastic Award recipient, again, McKenna Rhodes. And now for the Department of Landscape Architecture, Regional and Community Planning, the Landscape Architecture Outstanding Graduate Student Award recipient is Taryn Borelli. Taryn. Congratulations. The Landscape Architecture Outstanding Thesis Award, Pamela Blackmore. The Landscape Architecture Outstanding Master's Report Award winner is Madison Dalkey. <laughs> the Dr. Robert P. Ely Award, awarded for academic excellence, Jana Schulte. <laughs> the L.R. Quinlan Award, awarded for the most advancement during their course of study, the recipient is Mackenzie Wendling. Mackenzie. <laughs> the Landscape Architecture Foundation K State Olmsted Scholar is Priyasha Sritha. Priyasha, congratulations. 
American Society of Landscape Architects Honor and Merit Awards. Receiving honor awards are Pamela Blackmore and Janice Schulte. And a Certificate of Merit Award from the American Society of Landscape Architects, Priyasha Shretha, excuse me, and, and Mackenzie Wendling. The American Institute of Certified Planners Outstanding Student Award in Regional Community Planning, Rachel Foss. And the Regional Community Planning Outstanding Master's Thesis recipient is Rial like Dial, uh, Dial, excuse me, uh, Carver. <laughs> I should say Ryle Carver, I apologize. Um, Regional Community Planning Outstanding Master's Report, Leslie Froberg. And the Leland Edmonds, R. Edmonds Award, awarded to contributions to the program profession, the recipient, Samantha Esterbrook and Regan Tokos. <laughs> so now, would all the announced recipients please stand up so we can give you a big round of applause. So before we announce the graduates, would Brad Seidner join me at the lectern? Brad Seidner is the Senior Vice President, Chief Operating Officer of the Kansas State Alumni Association. He'll make some brief comments to our graduates and our audience, Brad. Good morning, graduates. And again, welcome to all the family and friends that are here today. Well, I'm very pleased to be part of this special day. So on behalf of the Kansas State Alumni Association, representing over 280,000 living graduates and friends of Kansas State, we'd like to offer our congratulations on this very special accomplishment here today. We are also here to welcome you into a new relationship with your alma mater as you begin this new chapter as a K-State graduate. Our mission at the Alumni Association is to lead and inspire lifelong involvement that will benefit Kansas State University and all members of the Wildcat community. I'd like to share three of the core values that help guide us in our mission to help keep you connected with K-State. The first value is link. The Alumni Association provides the lifelong link that alumni depend on to remain connected to your university. And you can stay in touch through hundreds of alumni activities held on campus, across the country, and even internationally. Another value is tradition, and today you will likely celebrate some K-State traditions, such as singing the alma mater or stopping at your favorite spot on campus with some friends to take the KSU photo. You may also have fond memories of doing the Wabash at a K-State sports event or rubbing your favorite bronze statue on campus for good luck on a test. And the third core value is purple, because for us K-Staters, purple is more than a color. It's a symbol of pride and connection. Because when you see somebody wearing K-State purple or a K-State class ring or showing off their K-State license plate, you immediately feel that sense of family. I'd also like to share that in recognition of your graduation, your College of Architecture, Planning and Design and the Alumni Association are providing you with a complimentary one-year membership to the Alumni Association. And we hope you'll always be a member of your alumni association. K-State alumni are among the most loyal in the nation. In fact, you are now part of one of the top five alumni associations and number one in the Big 12 Conference for the percentage of our graduates that are members. Well, that loyalty is shared worldwide by generations of K-Staters who have the same passion for K-State that you feel today as you receive your degree from one of the finest universities in the nation. The Alumni Association was also pleased to present to you today an exclusive alumni business card holder. And as you go through life and your titles change and your addresses change, please be sure to keep us updated 
because we want to make sure that you always stay connected to your K-State family. Again, congratulations on this special achievement here today. Be proud of your university. Wear your purple with pride. And as always, let's go K-State! Thank you, Brad. During the presentation of the degree candidates and recognition of recipients of graduate degrees, members of national and professional honor societies will be announced. This includes members of Phi Kappa Phi, an honor society dedicated to the unity and democracy of education and open to honoring students from all disciplines in the top 10% of their class. Members of Tog Sigma Delta Honor Society in Architecture and Allied Arts and members of Sigma Lambda Alpha Landscape Architecture Honor Society. Our graduate students officially received their degrees during the graduate school ceremony held yesterday, and a few did attend. Um, we congratulate them. Today in our ceremony, as, as faculty, family, and friends, we'll recognize our master's degree recipients by presenting them with their diploma covers, as well as other awards bestowed for their accomplishments. As described in your program, hoods are worn only by persons holding graduate degrees. Hoods are lined with the colors of the university. The binding and edging of the hood is the color pertaining to the subject of the degree, hence my strange combination of orange and lavender because I'm a Syracuse graduate student. Otherwise, I wouldn't have put the two colors together. The, the color of architecture is light purple. For interior architecture and product design, navy blue. For landscape architecture, brown. And for regional and community planning, peacock blue. Would Assistant Professor Michael Grogan please come forward to present the degree candidates? And President Myers, if you'll join me up here. And Would the recipients of the Master of Architecture in the first row please rise and come forward? Professor Matthew Knox, head of the Department of Architecture, will join Dean DeNoble and President Myers in congratulating the recipients of the Master of Architecture. Professor Wendy Ornelas will read the names of the graduates. Olivia Page Ashbrook, Master of Architecture. Lauren Elizabeth Bailey, Master of Architecture. Caden Bioman, Master of Architecture. <laughs> Tara Quinn Bray, Master of Architecture. Stephen Brigandi, Master of Architecture. <laughs> Megan Christine Burke, Master of Architecture, Pi Kappa Pi. Yui Ming Chow, Master of Architecture. <laughs> Nicholas James Carlson, Master of Architecture. Christian Scott Carter, Master of Architecture, Leadership Studies minor. <laughs> e 
Ilana Jean Carter, Master of Architecture. Benjamin Ryan Charpentier, Master of Architecture, French Minor. <laughs> Gabrielle Kirsten Coleman, Master of Architecture, Leadership Studies, Minor. Dylan Michael Combs, Master of Architecture. <laughs> Landon Andrew Cook, Master of Architecture. <laughs> Jacob Henry Combs, Master of Architecture. Mitchell Preston Culbertson, Master of Architecture. <laughs> Matthew John Dickman, Master of Architecture, Philosophy Minor. Danielle Dillaha, Master of Architecture. Jonathan Russell Disberger, Master of Architecture. Kathleen Nicole Ebert, Master of Architecture, Music Minor. <laughs> Shay Christopher Ensor, Master of Architecture. Edward Basil Freeman, Master of Architecture. <laughs> Juliana Fustano Saratti, Master of Architecture. Cody Gable, Master of Architecture. Morgan Marie Gales, Master of Architecture. Tucker John Glass, Master of Architecture. Samuel Aaron Green, Master of Architecture. Brandon Neal Heidi, Master of Architecture, Entrepreneurship Minor, APD Pro Certification. Congratulations. Casey Holly, Master of Architecture, Pi Kappa Pi. Nicholas Horbath, Master of Architecture.
Jaden Anissa Kelly. <laughs> Master of Architecture, sorry. She did get a degree. <laughs> Reagan Danae Kerfield, Master of Architecture. Joseph Anthony Cutter, Master of Architecture. <laughs> Michelle Lee, Master of Architecture, Leadership Studies minor, APD Pro certification. Zumin Marvin Lee, Master of Architecture. <laughs> Andrew Mallinson, Master of Architecture. Catherine Emily Matthews, Master of Architecture, Community Planning Minor. Ashton Elizabeth McWhorter, Master of Architecture, Leadership Studies Minor, APD Pro Certification. Logan Scott Medrano, Master of Architecture. <laughs> Douglas William Mylink, Master of Architecture. J.D. Myers, Master of Architecture. <laughs> Amber Nicole Morris, Master of Architecture, Communication Studies Minor. William Grant Olds, Master of Architecture, Community Planning Minor. <laughs> Alexander Clifton Overbay, Master of Architecture. Alicia Carol Sue Papan, Master of Architecture. <laughs> Ryan Jesse Polarski, Master of Architecture, Community Planning Minor. J. Ashley Peters, Master of Architecture, Community Planning Minor. <laughs> Scott Taylor Piper, Master of Architecture, Business Minor. Andrew Thomas Rash, Master of Architecture, Leadership Studies Minor. <laughs> Safa Jamal Salih, Master of Architecture. Dylan Preston Schoenfeld, Master of Architecture.
Kristen Danielle Seidemann, Master of Architecture. Jared Byer Shelton, Master of Architecture, Theater Minor. Lauren Nicole Silvers, Master of Architecture. Dakota Krejci Smith, Master of Architecture. James Reed Strawn, Master of Architecture. Timothy Joseph Strump, Master of Architecture. Chelsea Thibodeau, Master of Architecture. Stacia Thomas, Master of Architecture. Dennis Balun Tong, Master of Architecture. Samuel Valenzuela Lattice, Master of Architecture. Charlie Vu, Master of Architecture. Michael Joseph West, Master of Architecture. <laughs> Alexandra Ann Wilson, Master of Architecture, Business Minor. Chandler Michael Wilson, Master of Architecture. Andrew David Wood, Master of Architecture, Community Planning Minor, APD Pro Certification. Andrew Wu, Master of Architecture, Community Planning Minor. <laughs> Jessica Marie Wyatt, Master of Architecture. Chu Hao Yan, Master of Architecture. Andrew James Zilke, Master of Architecture. Catherine Elizabeth Zeno, Master of Architecture, Hospitality Management Minor, and APD Pro Certification.
Would the recipients of the Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design please rise and come forward? Viba Jani, Associate Professor of the Department of Interior Architecture and Product Design, will join Dean DeNoble and President Myers in congratulating the recipients of the Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Associate Professor Katrina Lewis will read the names of the graduates. Nora Algorori, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. <laughs> Abigail Marie Baker, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Kelsey Nicole Brown, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. <laughs> Caitlin Marie Bryant, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. <laughs> Ryan Oakley Collins, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. <laughs> Brianna Yvonne Cozart, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Caitlin Rose Edge, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Camden Paul Eckern, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Rafael Gonzalez Madosek, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. <laughs> Kevin Eugene Hartman, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Taylor Joanne Hegarty, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design, Leadership Studies minor. <laughs> Julian Lee, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Allison Rachel Luzinski, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design, Leadership Studies minor. <laughs> Catherine Francis Macy, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Mariah Elizabeth Malarick, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. <laughs> Ch 
Alexa, <laughs> Alexa Marie McCollum, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Cass Salvo McDowell, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design, French make minor. <laughs> Kaylee Elizabeth McElvain, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Erin Michelle Meek, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Okay. Jacob Forsyth Mullins, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Caitlin Elizabeth O'Leary, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. <laughs> Catherine Zen Awara, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Allison Jean Pratt, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Come in. Okay. Nicholson? Okay. Claire, Claire Nicholson Reed, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. McKenna Lynn Rhodes, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. <laughs> Margaret Ann Schulte, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design, Community Planning Minor, APD Pro Certification. Bing Lei Xiao, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. <laughs> Zach Ryan Simpson, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Chelsea Raven Smith, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Uh, uh. Ian Redmond Sullivan, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Allison Joyce Trent, Master of Interior Architecture and Product Design. Would the recipients of the Master of Landscape Architecture please rise and come forward? Professor Stephanie Raleigh, Head of the Department of Landscape Architecture and Regional and Community Planning will join Dean DeNoble and President Myers in congratulating the recipients of the Master of Landscape Architecture. Associate Professor Ann Beamish will read the names of the graduates. Spencer Anderson, Master of Landscape Architecture. And Community and Planning Minor.
Pamela Blackmore, Master of Landscape Architecture, Graduate Certificate in GIS. Karen Borelli, Master of Landscape Architecture, Phi Kappa Phi, Tau Sigma Delta, and Sigma Lambda Alpha. <laughs> Madison Kate Dulkey, Master of Landscape Architecture, Art Minor, and Sigma Lambda Alpha. Jacob Boyd Johnson, Master of Landscape Architecture. <laughs> Patrick Charles McCaffrey, Master of Landscape Architecture, Sigma Lambda Alpha. Matthew Thomas McCoy, Master of Landscape Architecture, Sigma Lambda Alpha. Avery John Owen Nichols, Master of Landscape Architecture, Sigma Lambda Alpha. Jana Lynn Schulte, Master of Landscape Architecture, Sigma Lambda Alpha. <laughs> Priyasha Shrezda, Master of Landscape Architecture. Emily Rose Voigt, Master of Landscape Architecture, Sigma Lambda Alpha. <laughs> Caleb R. Wagner, Master of Landscape Architecture, and Sigma Lambda Alpha. Mackenzie David Wendling, Master of Landscape Architecture, Entrepreneurship Minor, and Sigma Lambda Alpha. Would the recipients of the Master of Regional and Community Planning please rise and come forward? Pro Professor Stephanie Raleigh, Head of the Department of Landscape Architecture and Regional and Community Planning, will join Dean DeNoble and President Myers in congratulating the recipients of the Master of Regional and Community Planning. Associate Professor Ann Beamish will read the names of the graduates. Ryle Thomas Carver, Master of Regional and Community Planning. <laughs> Samantha Kylie Estabrook, Master of Regional and Community Planning, Leadership Studies Minor. Rachel Brianna Foss, Master of Regional and Community Planning. <laughs> Leslie Danielle Froberg, Master of Regional and Community Planning, Tau Sigma Delta.
Catherine Geist, Master of Regional and Community Planning. Fabiha Mubasira, Master of Regional and Community Planning. Emma Quinn Catherine Smith, Master of Regional and Community Planning. Reagan L. Tacos, Master of Regional and Community Planning, Geography Minor. Andrew Robert Young, Master of Regional and Community Planning, Political Science Minor. Each year, the graduating classes, along with faculty and department heads, select representatives to speak at our commencement ceremony from among their fellow students. This year, our students will be, and I'll ask them to come forward, Ryan Polarski, graduate in architecture, Margaret, I'm sorry, Maggie Schulte, graduate in interior architecture and product design, Mackenzie Wendling, graduate in landscape architecture, and Samantha Estabrook, graduate in regional and community planning. Ryan. Thank you, Dean DeNoble, and uh, thank you, everyone else. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Just to let you know, we aren't getting our real diplomas today, they're placeholders, so this is a fake graduation. <clears throat> I haven't even gotten all my uh, grades posted, so for all I know, I failed. Real sad to walk the stage, give a speech, and find out a week later that you need to retake the semester. I can only assume that all of you squeaked by, even with skipping class and turning half-baked assignments. It's our last year, so our professors had equal levels of high expectations of our work and sympathy for us putting up with them. <clears throat> Moving on though, in this speech, as well as our lives, it is now time to leave behind the four world classrooms of college and to enter the school of the world. We will work on deadlines, not for grades, but for money. We will no longer pine for our professor's praise, but for our bosses. We will no longer make small talk about where we go to school, but where we work. We will make money, pay taxes, and complain about how much we miss school and how those were the fun days, and now that we're old and in our 30s, they're not. <laughs> <clears throat> that is the way life works, though. They teach us in school with assignments and readings, then we go on to the professional world, and we learn that it was all wrong, and we have to learn on the job. <laughs> it's all right, though. Uh, every architect goes through that. The school just doesn't want to admit it. We will, be learn we will still be learning as we go to different parts of the country, being welcomed into firms, and the best part is we don't have to pay them for training us. Even better, they pay us. <laughs> I hope each of us finds a place to work hard and put our skills to use. I hope each of us meets people with whom we may speak honestly and share in each other's work. I hope you find a job that is a career, not some nine to five. Otherwise, I honestly have no idea what we were working for. Then again, I don't know, normally know where we're all going. All I know is that we must get there sooner or later. <clears throat> and before I end my speech, I would like to read a uh, poem. A fair goodbye, our well-earned degree, no need to shy as we all leave. We have worked hard, help we did take, please drop your guard and your family think. A day to remember, a memory to make, our flame from ember, this light we shall take. Thank you all very much.
everyone. How wonderful it is that we gather today with our friends and our family to celebrate all of our accomplishments. Although we start together in the first year and we end together today, we each embarked on our journeys through the different departments between these moments. The last five years have been quite the journey. Friendships made and lost, hearts broken, loves found, and tears shed. But through all of the stressful times, it was the camaraderie of our studio mates that made it bearable. The best parts were the late night shenanigans and snack runs, the laughter at 1 a.m. nonsense, and the heartfelt talks. We are one of two classes who experienced Old Seton, APD West, and the new building. But unlike the class above us, we worked our way upwards from the basement of Old Seton to ground level at APD West to top floor here at New Seton. Well, minus returning to the basement for fourth year, but we'll just gloss over that for now. <laughs> Four years ago, as I wrapped up my first year, graduation seemed so far away. Today was always just a subconscious thought, pushed behind looming studio deadlines, coordinating schedules for group projects, filming videos, producing drawings, and building models. It was there patiently waiting while the excitement of new departments and second year wore off. The late nights of third year with juggling shop, BCSIA, studio, and open house had us questioning both our sanity and just how little sleep we needed to get by on. It was made a little more real when we transitioned into grad school fourth year, and it began to be an encouragement just to get through the fall, be away interning or studying abroad in the spring and summer, and then come back for one last year and one final lap. Graduation has been the light at the end of the tunnel this year. From the extreme time and effort Capstone demanded to the preparations for our final thesis presentations, each deadline was just X number of months and then X number of days to graduation. And somehow, in the rush and blur of all that we found ourselves sitting here on the stage, the big day has arrived and with it emerges a new group of IPD grads that I'm proud to know. As you can tell, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit sad today. <laughs> but I am all the more excited to watch where everyone is going to go and what everyone is going to do. Sorry. <laughs> Bring on the future, because I am confident that we are ready and more than capable. To my IPD studio mates, <laughs> thank you for all the laughter you've shared and the lessons you've taught me. I wish you nothing but the happiness and the best of luck moving forward. Thank you. Hello. To my peers and friends, finally, we made it. We're here today together. To say congratulations doesn't come close to expressing the amount of pride I have in our collective accomplishments. I've seen your work on the walls. I've read many of your theses and reports. You all encourage me, and I'm optimistic for the future. We're leaving this campus with so much more than a diploma. For me, it's a caffeine dependency, permanent bags under my eyes, <laughs> lifelong friendships, and thick skin. As a first year student, just as the college announced its plans to renovate, I wrote to who would become our new building's namesake, Victor Rainier. After some dialogue and after some words of encouragement, he left me with this. Remember, resilience is the most important characteristic you can nurture. You will be knocked down many times. Architecture school is challenging and it requires thick skin. It's no secret that as designers, we need thick skin. We know it just as well as we've become testaments to it. But if you're like me and you've made it this far, you've experienced at least one design space that inspired you, sustained you, and softened your soul. I think back to one of the first times I realized the power of design. I was with my classmates on a field trip in Boston. It was a Friday night in an unfamiliar city and we were eager to explore it. We explored Chinatown and the financial district we followed the Greenway to Boston Harbor and walked to the very center of a large and unceremonious plaza where we sat and genuinely connected with each other for the first time. Through that procession, I came to recognize that despite our differences, urban design and landscape architecture had brought us together. 
By experiencing those spaces together, we grew together. Design had united us and softened our souls. I'm sure many of us here have similar experiences in rooms, buildings, landscapes, and communities. I implore each of you to use the thick skin I know you have to continue to advocate for and design spaces that bring people together and inspire hope. Although we walk away with diplomas and thick skin, those alone cannot solve the problems that our generation faces. Climate change, species extinction, rapid urbanization, and inequality require us to be global citizens and humanists. These challenges call us to boldly and collaboratively design with open minds, thick skins, and soft souls. I know this group, and I know we're up for the challenge. You all give me hope, and I look forward to the future that we design. Thank you. Good morning. To be frank, I really had no idea what I was going to say when I was asked to write this speech. Um, so it, it was a moment that I had dreamed about for a while, and uh, I did what most of us have been accused of, of doing. I just waited, what many of our professors would call procrastinating. Um, and sometimes we have to admit that it was simply just that. We were procrastinating. However, what happens when we just wait? I find that many of us in our college uh, careers have done this at least once. Um, and this act, even though it's often criticized, often leads to our greatest ideas. Um, so I went on a walk, cleared my head, um, and then just waited for inspiration. And sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to wait for the spark, and then ultimately, we know that we'll go out and we'll make something that we're proud of and that other people can be proud of and enjoy. And sometimes, it justifies the wait. But we know that all the time, with everyone in this room, it always justifies the wait. I believe the most special part of my graduating class, um, specifically the planners, yet I know that it applies to so many of the other disciplines, is the wide and far-reaching differences that we have. Whether it be our passions, whether it be our communication styles, um, whether it be our strategies to get there or our career goals. Hold on to those, build them, nourish them, and then create more. I suppose one encouragement for the class is to uncover, um, uh, that we have yet to uncover, and that there is so much more experiences and passions expressed in our writing, our plans, and our discussions. And that's only the beginning. The unanticipated and measurable qualities of our class has never been more profound. Pay attention to the unanticipated things that will enter your life that happen outside of work, that will motivate and inspire you to be a better designer, planner, and overall global citizen. We all talk about the citizenry, the engaged citizenry that we would like to be able to design for and plan for. And as we leave here today, the main thing that I encourage you to do is to be one of those citizens. Don't believe that this degree somehow absolves you from being a part of your community. If anything, it should encourage you to be more of a part of your community. I urge you to always embrace the competing interests, facilitate the discussions over the unspoken conflicts, be a part of a community that you are serving. In turn, you will grow, and you also will help them grow. Hold fast to the cultural aspects when you enter communities. When you are struggling to understand a community, their re relationship with people or space, I encourage you to consider what it was like when we all gathered in Pierce Commons our first year. And as we were the last class to truly be able to enjoy that space, I encourage you to consider that vital aspect that built our community. I urge you to strongly consider how your actions will either grow, preserve, or inhibit 
the current generations and generations to come after us. But most of all, don't be afraid of the wait. Because even that in itself is an experience. Rachel, Leslie, Reagan, Mason, who couldn't be here today, Andrew, Ryle, EQ, Catherine, and Fabiha. Thank you. You are honestly all so refreshing and well-equipped. Now we've made it and the wait is over, but what's going to happen next? What's our next goal? But I think the real important question is, what are we going to do during that time of waiting? Can you imagine? Thank you for the fresh ideas and perspectives and approach and I can only hope that you approach your professional career and your personal nourishment with the same tenacity, if not more, now that we have graduated. Thank you. As evidenced by our student speakers, we're sending the next wave of AP design graduates into the world to bolster the ranks of our professions, transform our designed environment, and our communities. Congratulations to all of you. Remember, you are now entering that other dimension. As alumni, you carry the aura of K-State with you. As your reputation grows, so does that of your college. In a beautiful and parallel manner, as the college continues to be recognized for its quality, you benefit, benefit greatly by invoking your AP Design K-State heritage. Make us proud and please know that we will continue to endeavor to do the same. <clears throat> so at this point, I leave you with a uh, first, a thought from Antoine de saint Paris in his wonderful, timeless book, Wind, Sand, and Stars. And although he was speaking of pilots and airplanes, I think his words are beautifully reflective of those freshly minted design and planning professionals before you and their tools of inquiry. He said, precisely because it is perfect. The machine dissembles its own existence instead of forcing itself upon our notice. Thus, the realities of nature resume their pride of place. It is not with metal that the pilot is in contact. Contrary to this vulgar illusion, it is thanks to the metal and by virtue of it that the pilot rediscovers nature. The machine does not isolate man from the greatest problems of nature, but plunges him more deeply into them. In this way, our faculty and staff have well prepared you and know each of you will magnificently burst onto the scene of your practices and your community. Let us recognize our graduates one more time. So the brass quintet will uh, begin our second half of our ceremony. Um, <laughs> just, just kidding. Uh, no, in all seriousness, would you please rise? Uh, and the brass quintet will lead us in the singing of the alma mater, which you may find printed in the inside front cover of your program.
college faculty and staff are pleased to invite you to attend a reception immediately following this ceremony in the Rainier Auditorium in uh, our wonderful home. We ask the audience to please remain seated. You may sit down if you would like. Um, uh, while the quintet plays the recessional and until all the graduates and faculty have left the auditorium. Thank you so much for being um, here and making this a special day, this wonderful spring 2019 commencement celebration. I wish you all a safe trip home and hope that the lightning that's been striking in the area is not too close. Will the graduates prepare to process? Thank you. 